March SAT, cancel. May SAT, cancel. June SAT, I mean like five people took it, but still cancel. And now SAT for college admission, the UC Regents voted today to drop both the SAT and the ACT requirement for admission. Drop both the SAT and the ACT requirement. All right, cool. I guess I don't have to study for SAT anymore. You know what? It's been cool, guys. It's been fun. I'll see you next year. All right, let me get that. All right, you don't want to. There you go. So the whole coronavirus thing going on right now, it canceled your school and it also canceled all your SAT exams. And California schools took the first step to make SAT and ACT these admission exams optional for this admission cycle. And now you might be wondering these three things. First, are there will there be more colleges that do not require SAT and ACT? Will there be more schools that would make it optional? Second, does that mean I don't have to study for the SAT anymore and I can just enjoy my summer and third like how realistic is this can i actually trust this and not study for the sat and not get this advantage if i were in high school i would be thinking the exact same thing and let me tell you from my perspective as a tutor for eight years i would tell you this is not happening this is probably just going to be a california thing and it's not going to happen to all these ivy leagues and top schools and it's not gonna it's not gonna spread out this whole sat act optional thing is probably going to stop in california it's not going to spread to any of these schools that you are planning on applying to i think it's a really bad idea here's why let me tell you exactly why i think it's a bad idea and not many schools are going to follow this thing it actually hurts the colleges to not have sat and act in each student's application here's why see let's say we have two students right let's say we have little johnny right here and let's say we have Kevin right here. Let's say John and Kevin go to different schools, right? And we know that in terms of each school, each school is different. Like the difficulty of the classes are not the same between two schools. And how, it, how easy it is to get a 4.0 in that school, it varies within each school. And the amount of work that you have to put in to get a 4.0 in this school is different than 4.0 from this school. And when I was in high school, I went to a, see, there were like six major high schools in my area. And let's say it's like the hardest over here. And it's like the easiest over here. I went to a school right here. It's not that it's not the hardest school, but it was definitely wasn't the easiest school. And let's say I got like a 3.6, right? And let's say someone that went to a super easy school got a 4.0, right? See, when we are talking to each other, when I'm talking with my friend, we know that, okay, 4.0 and 3.6, they are going to be about the same because I went to a harder school, that person went to an easier school. So you could kind of compensate for the lack of 0.4 for the difficulty of that school. So let's come back to Johnny and Kevin. So let's say John got a 4.0 from a super easy school and Kevin got a 4.0 from a super hard school, right? And when they apply to colleges, right? They're gonna send in their application, they're gonna add their GPA, and it's, they're both going to say 4.0. John got a 4.0, Kevin got a 4.0. Like John and Kevin knows that, okay, Kevin got a 4.0 from a harder school and John got a 4.0 from an easier school, but the thing about colleges is that they don't know how difficult your school was. Literally all they know is exactly what the name of the high school was and where, like which state, the address, like that's the only thing they know. There are like thousands and thousands of high schools and colleges are not going to keep a list of saying, oh, this school is definitely harder than this school. So let's give this person extra credit for 3.7 and 4.0. No, they're going to be about the same. See, colleges are not going to keep a track on difficulty of each high school. It's just, it's just not realistic. And we know that colleges want the best of the best of the best of their application pool. And they always want to pick the smartest and the brightest students, right? But here's the thing. If John has a 4.0 and Kevin has 4.0, how do we know which one's brighter? See, let's, let's just say it's going to be harder to get a 4.0 from a hard school. So let's say Kevin is technically brighter, right? Let's say Johnny is not so bright. But how would colleges know? Because they both have 4.0, right? You can think about APs and let's say like how many honor classes you took and everything. But let's say, say they have equal AP numbers, equal honors classes. How would they know whether Johnny's a brighter student or Kevin's a brighter student? They will never know. However, to solve this issue, that's where SAT comes in. See, when people take the SAT, we know that everybody takes the exact same exam, exact same questions. And once a student gets a 1500 on the SAT, it means 1500. Whether you went to this school, whether you went to that school, if you got 1500, it means the same thing to college. So essentially, SAT and ACT, they serve as like a measuring stick to colleges to determine who is a brighter student than the other one. See, I know people are going to say, John, SAT is not about how smart you are, and it's all about how good you are at test taking and then how much more money your parents have have to spend on college prep SAT prep and I completely agree with you on that if you come from a family where they have a lot of a lot of money to spend on SAT prep and get the best resources you're gonna score higher than a student who has no resources and no extra cash to spend on SAT prep 
And I honestly think that's kind of messed up. But with all that aside, let's, make, let's just mainly focus on what's going on right now. So that is going to be a main purpose of SAT and SACT. They are going to be the measuring sticks for colleges. And when California schools decided to make these exams optional, it's going to be tough for them to decide whether this person is brighter or this person is brighter. Because the reason why they want the brightest and the brightest student is because once people go to the college and they graduate and they become the alumni, see these alumni are essentially the faces of the university. And they're gonna contribute a lot to the ranking of the colleges as well. That's why to, to keep their current ranking and keep going up the ladder, colleges want the brightest, brightest minds. And even though SAT and ACT is not the exact measuring stick of the brightest minds, the problem is they're not gonna know based on just GPAs. It varies so much within school to school to school to state to state to state. So with all that in mind, would colleges make SAT and ACT optional? Would it be a widespread thing? I pre like, I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but for me, my prediction is it's not going to be a prevalent thing. It's probably just going to be in a California school given the trouble that they are in right now. And if you're wondering, should I keep studying for the SAT or should I just not worry about SAT anymore and just enjoy my summer? No, don't justify not studying for the SAT because it's optional in California schools. See, even though it is optional, so optional doesn't mean you don't have to like submit the scores. And when you submit your scores, it can only help you. It's not going to hurt you unless your SAT is like way, way, way below the average line of the school you're applying to. For example, when Johnny and Kevin both apply to that school with the exact same stat, and let's say Kevin had a 1500 on the SAT, but Johnny didn't have the SAT score because it was optional, Johnny didn't submit the score. From a college's perspective, when people have 4.0 and they have to take a lot of APs, it tells them that, okay, this kid is probably right. But when they only have one spot to accept the kid, they're gonna go with this one. Because for Kevin, they know that, oh, he got 1500 on the SAT. But for John, he doesn't, they don't know. Maybe that Johnny got 1500, maybe he even got 1550 on the SAT. But the thing is, it's a gamble for colleges. They don't know. And when it comes to students that they're admitting and the alumni they're going to create, they don't wanna gamble with that because that is directly tied to college ranking. And they wanna keep this thing high. So long story short, would colleges make it optional for everywhere? No. Should you keep studying for the SAT? Yes. If I'm a freshman or sophomore or junior right now, should I be studying for the SAT? Yes, you should be studying for the SAT, ACT, whatever the choice of your exam is, you should be studying for that. Don't think that your peers, your competitors are not gonna submit their scores because it's going to be optional. There will be people who won't submit it, but they are. Well, but there will also be people who are gonna take advantage of other people who don't submit the exam and put themselves above their peers. Be the people that are above your peers, not below your peers. You wanna be better, you wanna be smarter, you wanna get the better stats and get better extracurriculars so that you earn that spot when you apply to the college of your dreams. Don't slack on that. So that's going to be a wrap for today's video, guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you like seeing videos like this and getting a realistic picture of what's going on in terms of SAT and admission cycle, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you wanna be notified when the new video is up and be the first to get the tips, turn the notification bell on. So that's going to be it for this video. Keep prepping, keep studying. And if you're studying for the SAT right now, join our SAT Facebook group. And I'm going to be in there. And there are also other very ambitious high school students who are studying for the SAT right now. They want to get that target score and go to the school of their dream. And I'm going to help you get there. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video.